And now, cutting through your typical media nonsense and offering you a rational and unbiased perspective on current events and life in Tampa Bay. He's a successful entrepreneur, published author, top listing agent, a real estate and finance expert that goes to bat for you every day as a consumer advocate. Your host and the consumer quarterback, Brandon Rhymes. And yes, here we are again another day committed to being your consumer advocate, all about helping you understand your buying decisions and making you more street smart here on the Consumer Quarterback Show. This show is going to be heavy in real estate, appraisals, uh, title. Uh, we're going to talk about discount points. What are they? What do they matter? Uh, self-employed borrowers, how does that break down? So we're going to dive deep into real estate today and valuations of real estate properties here. we got a great lineup for for you, Jenny Restrepo, insured title agency, Ray Hall, Ray Hall Appraisals, and Justin Kelly, CPF Mortgage, uh, here on the program today. And we always like to feature our real estate listings. We help our sellers profit more and sell faster by doing that. Innovation, innovation with uh, radio, TV, internet marketing, 80 different outlets worldwide. Uh, so we got a hot property listing here. Uh, this one is going to be a commercial property in, property in South Tampa, 4220 West Pearl. Uh, this is a beautiful property great opportunity for that self-employed that business owner that maybe has a contractor business a self-employed business uh 4220 west pearl avenue in tampa you got a 1200 square foot building uh, over a half acre lot corner lot with ample parking centrally located in south tampa great opportunity for uh, relocating a contractor or other business and you can see all of our real estate listings at platinum mvp team dot kw.com this is god's country and give a quick shout out to our friend brandon porter over at veteran gutters if you're thinking of putting gutters on your home reach out to brandon and his team they're veterans they served our great country and he has american-made products as well veteran gutters longtime friends of the consumer quarterback show all right we got justin kelly in the house welcome back sir thank you very much thank you very much got good stuff to talk about today yeah absolutely i love the ideas that you had uh, brought in for today and and uh you know there's a lot of uncertainty in the marketplace you know these these bonds come up you hear this talk about bonds i hear more and more people talking about a deep recession uh going into a depression that we're coming into economically uh so what are you seeing out there um, you know, in, in terms of interest rates, obviously we've seen rates climb um, significantly since the beginning of the year. Um, you know, but overall we still have some some pretty reasonable interest rates. You know, oh, yeah. you know hi- historically they're not bad. But uh, when you start looking at it deeper, you you, you got to think you're looking at inflation numbers, and and you know some numbers came out with eight percent, and some people say you know hey it may even be higher than that. Who really knows? Right. But uh, you know when you get, when you're talking about mortgage bonds, you have to have investors to buy these mortgage bonds. Somebody has to step up to the plate and buy these, and and uh, you know that can be difficult when you're talking about a five and a half percent, five percent mortgage bond, and you've got eight percent inflation. Right. Like, we've got a situation there. We got to kind of figure out. Yeah. So. The Fed is trying to curve this inflation problem by yep. raising interest rates on short-term Fed funds rate, and yep. so that is affecting the entire market as a whole. And I think uh, it, people are starting to reassess the way they think about this market. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a challenging time for a lot of people. And then, and by the way, you know, it, it was already difficult for people to find a home that they like, and now when you have that quarter point or half a point increase in rate, now that limits your buyer pool. It reduces that amount of purchase price that you can have. So instead of buying three fifty, maybe you're buying two seventy five or what whatever the numbers are specifically for your uh, situation and i remember pasco county last month i was looking at the stats for pasco county uh it was a 97 percent absorption rate well this month it's down to 86 percent. so is that a softening in the market I, i'm glad you brought that up i mean and as you look at beyond pasco county and and the whole state that's almost i mean spot on you're starting to see yeah. more inventory come onto the market um, you know, I don't know days on market. We probably have to pull those that data point up. But yep. you're, you're you're starting to see what I would call uh, a settling down of the market right yeah. now. Yeah, we don't know what it, what exactly to call it yet. So month supply of inventory was 1.1 month supply of inventory. That's Pasco. Um, I've got uh, Pinellas right here, 83% absorption rate, 1.2 month supply of inventory, uh, seller's market. And let's find uh, Hillsboro here. So Hillsboro, 79% absorption rate, uh, 1.27 month supply of inventory. So yeah, they're all very similar. And yep. I imagine if you take that to Miami Dade or Palm Beach or up in uh, other Panhandle, you know, they're all somewhat similar because there's so many folks from out of state moving down. Yeah, absolutely. We're seeing we're still seeing a pretty strong demand from out of state. Um, I don't know, you know, as we move forward into, you know, the latter half of the year, if that's going to slow down 
how interest rates, uh, you know, rising are going to affect things overall. I mean, that's, you know, it's kind of, it's up in the air right now. Yep. Still a good place to be, though, uh, in the real estate market here, buying, selling, investing. Uh, we would love to talk to you and, and Justin and his team at CPF Mortgage here locally. Again, another example of a local area business owner, local contributor to our show. Support this family, the radio show family here. Save our hotline number. If you don't need uh, that connection now, maybe in the future you will or somebody else will. 813-917-1894. Call or text the hotline. 813-917-1894, cpfloans.com, cpfloans.com. And I'm going to play a quick clip here. I want to get your reaction. It's a 40-second clip uh, from one of my favorite podcasts I listen to a lot. What was interesting to this me Peter Navarro. today with this stock market fall, usually the stock market's going down because of the inflation, the short on the long bonds going up, meaning interest rates are going up on the long end of the curve, the longer term, right? Today, no, 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 no. Only the stock market went down. And what went with the long bond, the way the long bond signaling, what it's telling us, Steve, is this recession is going to be so bad, it's going to be a depression. So in a depression, it's going to be really hard for those interest rates to keep climbing. This is how bad things are now. Your reaction to that? Yeah, I mean, listen, it, it, normally when you're in a recessionary period, um, depression, if you will, he, you know, they went yeah. they went to the extreme there. It, he, he's right. It's hard to raise interest rates in an environment where you've got um, uh, economic pressures. So it's going to be interesting to see because we've kind of got ourselves in this situation because we had cheap money for too long. Yeah. Interest rates stayed too low for too long, yep. and it flooded the market with money. Yep. Um, and the mo money supply got too high. And so now we're in this situation where we're trying to backpedal. Yep. And it's kind of uncharted territory. They mismanaged it for so long. Yep. You know, these these swamp creatures in D.C., these, you know, these unelected bureaucrats in many cases, a lot of these folks that are appointed, yep. uh, you know, similar to Fauci being in the medical side. But uh, let's let's shift gears here. What is what is a discount point? All right. So, you know, obviously with rates going up now, we're starting to, you know, get borrowers that are needing, you know, to get creative. So a discount point is defined simply as um, paying a fee to get a lower interest rate or lower than market rate that way you can afford more house um, you know with rates going up you might need to you know you went like you said you went from 350 to 275 now we're trying to get people back as close to that as possible so we start looking at you know discount points them paying a a percentage of their loan amount in order to get a lower interest rate on the loan now the benefit of that is obviously every single month their payments going to be lower but you know we do a cost benefit analysis um, whenever we're going to talk about paying potential discount points, and you know if you know, let's just say you paid five thousand dollars in discount points and you save two hundred dollars a month, at month twenty of your three hundred and sixty month loan on a thirty year term, mm -hmm. you would break even, and then so after every month after that, you've got a return on investment of two hundred dollars a month. It's also going to allow you to qualify for more loan. Yep, it'll help your ratios. Your, yep. your ratios out. By the way, the word amortization means to die slow in Latin. Oh, yeah, wow. amortization. Yeah. yeah, to die slow. So that's what happens with these uh, these loans. They're front end loaded with yep. interest, so they die slow. That's where you get the three hundred sixty months. Uh, and then some people put it on the bi weekly payment programs. Are those still around? You still doing that? Absolutely. Yeah. So in the service, you know, after your loan closes, it goes into the servicing department, and then you can you know you can request to go on a bi weekly payment. And essentially, what that does is it allows you to put one extra principal and interest payment per year towards your mortgage. Yep. And, uh, you know, it's said to cut your loan down by about seven years. Yeah, absolutely. And then, uh, you know, one of the things that I think is a, a value point for me as a realtor is I started off as a mortgage broker. I started off as a mortgage loan officer uh, here in Tampa Bay, a couple of firms, and I went to uh, H&R Block Mortgage at the time. I don't even think they have a mortgage side anymore. No, they do But, uh, yeah, you know, then I worked as a wholesale lender, uh, you know, and that, and that. But anyways... I learned a lot. I learned how to qualify deals. I learned what to look for. And now as a realtor, I can kind of sniff out some of the, you know, what before it even hits the the, the contract. But when it comes to self-employed borrowers, there's some things that people need to know there as well. Definitely. I mean, with the great resignation, as they've called it since COVID, we've seen a lot of self-employed borrowers or people go into business for themselves now. Right. And especially in Florida. I mean, we're, we're rich with self-employed borrowers and, you know, we see, uh, you know, a lot of uh, misnomers and misinformation. So people call in all the time. They say, well, what makes me a self-employed borrower? Here's my W-2. I paid myself and 
but I own the company, but I it's just, just use my W-2 income. Well, it doesn't work like that, you know? Mm. So it, from an underwriting standpoint, it defines a self-employed borrower as somebody who owns 25% of an entity or more. You are self-employed. At that point, you're we're going to look for two years history of you owning that business. Right. Um, so, you know, you've got to be in business for at least a couple of years. There are some exceptions, but that's on a case by case basis. And there's some requirements involved with that. Especially but, if it's a like and similar business line. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Sim- similar business line, um, similar pay structure. Um, mm-hmm. You're coming over and you've you've produced, uh, you know, similar revenues yep. that was in line with your last year to date pay stub. So. You know, there's some things that we can work around with that, but it's on a case by case basis. Um, you know, underwriting is going to be looking at uh, stability, strength of the business, and the ability of the business to continue to produce revenue yeah. um, at least the same or more increasing over the you know the next few years. Right, absolutely. If you just joined us, we're talking with Justin Kelly here on the Consumer Quarterback Show. He's a mortgage loan expert, CPF Mortgage here locally, uh, right here in Tampa Bay. CPFLoans.com online at CPF loans.com and yeah so so some tips for the self-employed because the self-employed they want to write as much off they want to show yeah. governor or the, not governor they want to show the president or the irs uh the government that is uh you know here's here's a low set of numbers but yeah. then when it comes time to qualify they want to buy the big house they got to show a little bit higher numbers well let's let's start off with the biggest mistake that i see brand new self-employed people even one to five years they've owned the business they don't keep an accurate um detailed up-to-date profit and loss statement and balance sheet and that's pretty important anytime you're going to go and request a loan anybody who's going to loan you the money is going to want to see in a snapshot where you are in that particular year with your business right and so a lot of people you know just keep their bank statements together at the end of the year they throw them to their account and say all right do my taxes yeah well as a self-employed borrower now you're in a different realm you need to keep track throughout the year of how much you're making, what your revenues are, what your expenses are, and what your net income is. You need to be able to see that in a snapshot and be able to report that. So I always tell people, you know, find an accounting system, uh, QuickBooks, um, hire a local expert. They have them all over the place. There's a yep. lot of Google Bookkeepers. videos. Bookkeepers. Bookkeepers. I mean, there's lots of resources where you can train yourself and easily keep track of this stuff. You know, QuickBooks will allow you to connect all of your um bank accounts, your operating accounts in there and feed all your transactions there and you can keep track of it very easily. Right. That way when you need to, you know, provide something for your business from for from a financial standpoint and get a loan, yeah. you're able to do it with a couple clicks of a mouse. Yeah. A couple so an opportunity comes up to buy an asset or something like that. Absolutely. We see it all the time where you know people will call in and they've got the two year history, but the first couple of years they've been in business, they haven't really kept great financial records. They don't really know what to do. And we're, we're halfway through the year. We need a profit and loss and balance sheet. And they go, what? You know? Yeah, what's that? <laughs> what, what is that? So we have to train them. And it's, it takes, it's lengthier for them. They can't move. They're not nimble. So that's one of the biggest things. And the other thing is, yeah, be cautious and make sure you're filing your tax returns properly. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, get a CPA, file the right way. And, you know, make sure that you're, the last thing is make sure you're paying attention to exactly how much money you're claiming after all of your tax deductions. Right. Because as a self-employed borrower, that's what's going to dictate how much money you can borrow. Yeah. You know, after all your deductions, your tax write-offs. So that's 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 yeah. an important thing. It's not what you make, it's what you keep. That's exactly what, correct. At the end of the year, what's your net? That's absolutely correct. Talk to me a little bit about what's going on out there in the non-conforming market. You know, you have these conforming loans. They talk about that mean, meaning that it can be sold to Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, et cetera, USDA. Yep. And then outside of that, they have non-conforming, yep. non-QM, they call sure. it, non-qualified mortgage, alternative financing. Absolutely. So what we just discussed is the requirements, the basic requirements behind conventional financing, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac. So you're seeing a lot of uh, new loan products and programs coming out from hedge funds and Wall Street coming out and saying, you know, creating these products um, that there's an appetite for. And uh, it'll allow self-employed borrowers who meet the two-year requirement, but maybe wrote a little too much off of their tax returns. It allows them to provide business bank statements. And so we'll look at the deposits that you've made in your account over the last 12 months, apply a formula to it. And a lot of times it will yield a much larger monthly revenue number or qualifying income than your tax returns where you wrote everything right. off. Exactly. And and that's that's a common sense loan for them because they say, hey, look, they're, they're obviously managing a business. They, they know how to, you know, they've been in business X amount of years. They know how to kind of manage things. Yep. And then, uh, you know, maybe looking at the trade that they're in or whatever the business line is, you know, what's the prospects for that business to continue to yep. generate revenue? Absolutely. And the, obviously the deposits going into the account speak volumes to how healthy right. the business is. 
And then when they apply, uh, you know, a calculation to determine, you know, how much of that should go toward expenses, how much of that was actually more than likely um, taken by the business owner, we're able to formulate a really, really good um, monthly income and qualify them based off of that. Now, it's a non-qualifying mortgage loan or non-QM loan, which mm -hmm. is, it's an alternative loan. So, you know, rates are going to be higher. The requirements for down payment are going to be a little bit more than a conventional loan, but, you know, you're not having to show those tax returns. Yeah. People like that. Yep, Scan absolutely. that in. Just get those bank statements over. And uh, Justin Kelly, CPF Mortgage, CPFLoans.com. Uh, can folks connect with you online, offline? How do you want to be reached? Absolutely. Um, so our, our website directly at CPFLoans.com, or they can call us 727-226-1040. Uh, we love having conversations with people about this stuff. What's that number again? 727-226-1040. Awesome. All right. Good stuff. Thanks for bringing in that good good content today, man. Absolutely. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Hey, we're going to take a break here. When we come back, Ray Hall is in the house. Ray Hall appraised.